Hey guys, in this video we are going to learn a little bit about hydrogen bonding and its effect on boiling points. So in the video about electronegativity, we talked about the fact that in an alcohol molecule or an alcohol containing molecule, the oxygen is much more electronegative than the hydrogen atom. And that means that the electrons in the covalent bond are constantly being pulled closer towards the oxygen than the hydrogen. That means the hydrogen doesn't really have two electrons in its outer shell, so it's partially positively charged. And similarly, because the oxygen is gaining some more electron density from that bond, that means it is partially negatively charged. So if another water molecule, sorry, another alcohol comes along, it will similarly have those partial charges on the oxygen and on the hydrogen. So what will happen is, is those two molecules will interact with each other and you'll get an intermolecular interaction known as a hydrogen bond. So this is a really important uh, type of intermolecular interaction that is really important in terms of how enzymes work, how things like uh, drug molecules interact with the binding side of enzymes and proteins. And it's also really important in terms of boiling point. So if you take this three carbon alkane okay so this is propane propane is typically a gas and it's very very volatile and that's why even at room temperature it's in a gaseous phase whereas if you take a water molecule which is even smaller and usually smaller things tend to be more volatile water has a boiling point as you know of 100 degrees okay and that's an exceptionally high boiling point for such a small molecule and the reason for that comes back to hydrogen bonding so similar to in the case of an alcohol, in a water molecule, you have partial negative charges on the oxygens and you have partial positive charges on the hydrogens. So then what happens is more water molecules will come along and you'll get intermolecular bonding. You'll get that hydrogen bonding again. But what happens is that it's a kind of, what's the phrase? Um, it's a building up, of, it's an effect that builds up because what happens is you don't just get one hydrogen bond between two molecules. Another atom will come along, sorry, another molecule of water will come along and that will form hydrogen bonds as well. And what happens is basically you end up with a really extensive network of more and more and more hydrogen bonds so it becomes very difficult to separate the molecules from each other. So the reason something boils or it turns into a gas from a liquid is because you are separating all of the molecules really far away from each other. To do that in water, it's very difficult because you have to provide enough energy to interrupt all of those intermolecular forces. And there's quite a lot of them. So when you start to think then about um, organic compounds and how hydrogen bonding affects those, if you compare these three structures, Okay, so if you were to compare this ketone to an alcohol, no, oh, sorry, no or group, one, two, three, of similar size, so they have the same number of carbons, four carbons in each, and this carboxylic acid. If you had to fit, guess which one would have the lowest boiling point, I hope you'd be able to tell that it's going to be this ketone. And the reason for that is because there are no real intermolecular forces between this ketone and another molecule of this ketone. The only things you'll have would be typical dipole-dipole interactions. However, if you compare it to this alcohol, much like up here, each molecule of uh, this alcohol can form two hydrogen bonds. It can form a hydrogen bond from this hydrogen to another oxygen and from this oxygen to another hydrogen of a neighbouring alcohol molecule. So for that reason, an alcohol of a similar size will have a higher boiling point than, for example, a ketone. Carboxylic acids will tend to have higher boiling points again, and the reason for that is because they form dimers. So if you draw this out again, like so, this oxygen, so we can have any ore group there, this oxygen is partially negatively charged, this oxygen is also partially negatively charged and this hydrogen has a partial positive charge. So if you were to draw another molecule of this carboxylic acid, what happens now is that this hydrogen will form a bond to that oxygen. 
and this hydrogen will form a bond to that oxygen. That means every time you have a molecule of this carboxylic acid, you'll form these dimer-like structures and that gives them much higher boiling points than, for example, alcohols and especially ketones. So many carboxylic acids will actually be solid, like benzoic acid, and then an awful lot of alcohols will be high boiling solvents or liquids. So for example, methanol and ethanol are lower than 100 degrees, but I think they're around 70 or 80 degrees is the boiling point. So that's just a summary on hydrogen bonding, why it's so important and how it affects the boiling points of various um, molecules. So I hope you found that interesting and I hope you were able to understand it. If you want to see more videos like this, just check out the channel and please do have a look at the link for the GoFundMe page because all of these videos are being made as part of a fundraiser to raise some money for Cystic Fibrosis Ireland. Thanks guys.